out here at Glen Helen today. Uh, the Two Stroke Nationals are going on, and uh, we got a really cool opportunity from our buddy Robbie McQuarrie, who bought this bike at a Mecham auction, and it is a 2001 factory Husqvarna Fast by Ferracci that was a race bike of this guy, Mr. Steve Lampson. And so uh, what, a, what a cool treat to be able to ride it. And then I've been bugging you for what, six, six months? Yeah, to, pretty much, pretty much. <laughs> Not just, bugging me, but just... I, yeah, I, you're busy and, you know, whatever. It's taking some time. But we finally met up, and I said, I, I really would love to see you riding your old bike. And uh, don't, you don't have to love it. Let's just talk about it. <laughs> and uh, we both said it's actually really fun as long as you're not riding past about 70%. Yeah, David, it was basically, I called it the 70% bike, and uh, I hope they don't get mad at me saying that. But, uh, yeah, anything past that, if you really push the level up of, above that, it started getting a little sketchy and you know, putting it on your head. So well, I called it that. <laughs> well, so you rode for them in 2001 and 2002, and uh, you were kind of, like you said, kind of at the tail end of your career, and when this opportunity came along, you jumped on it. Obviously, when something like that happens, you're kind of optimistic that maybe it'll it'll work out you rode the 250 in supercross the 125 outdoors right yeah correct and it was really the same story great motors but handling woes uh you know so we can we can get into that let's let's first give our impression of the bike here um i i was curious to see after all these years is it did you know and you made a comment to our video guy like yeah you know the way the power is i'm, I'm re i remember it now like it kind of came back does it trigger some memories like, oh, yeah, I, I remember that. Oh, it definitely does. Um, yeah, the power on these things. The motors were unbelievable. Um, 125 and 250, I mean, I did, pulled a lot of good starts. Whole shot at a couple of races, but uh, it was hard to hang on to it. But, uh, yeah, overall, I mean, the things definitely had motors, but just the handling wasn't, you know, quite that great. But. Well, and you're dealing with a Sax Shock and Marzocchi Forks, which those guys just don't have any Supercross experience. Um, and even in motocross, it's different over here than Europe, and it just didn't translate. Yeah, and, and like our comments today, like you said, it was really stiff in the beginning. It doesn't take the plush bumps very well, but then it, as it blows, it'll blow through the stroke, you know, so <laughs> kind of opposite of what you want. <laughs> it's but, a, um, it's they, a complete opposite of what you're yeah. hoping to have. But they busted their asses. Um, they really worked hard on trying to make it the best they could possibly make it, and, and we tried a lot of stuff, and the forks are big big forks on that thing you know but we just have, we always had a little bit of a problem with them you know so but overall i mean it was okay bike but well uh, so i was really nervous uh <laughs> you know anytime i ride a bike this old like i'm very very cautious at first but like once i i'm like all right it seems like it's gonna hold together and i started kind of getting on it i was having a really good time like again i wasn't racing and i'm not pushing and i'm on a vet track but the motor is just super great throttle response like you didn't have to even think about the clutch the thing just picked up and went and a real nice strong pull real throaty sound to it and it turned really well like i was surprised how tight the turning radius is you could just sit and go in a tiny circle if you wanted to uh, but again we hit a little bit of bumps and this thing started shaking like a labrador coming out of the lake or something i mean just all over the place oh yeah and like when, when I rode it there, it did, uh, I haven't been riding, by the way, for ages, it seems like, but uh, I was a little nervous riding it. It wasn't bad, like you say, good, good bottom end, pulls through, um, not a lot of clutch, um, but head shake, yeah, I got some head shake. <laughs> Every lap, I could watch the front end like this, I'm like, oh shit, but no. Yeah, Fun. well, a little bit loose. It's a cool bike to look at, you know, like it's got these massive hubs and the whole subframe is titanium, so it's got some really cool parts on it. Um, but that doesn't always equal a great race bike all in all. Yeah, no, and then it does have some trick parts on it. And like we were talking earlier, this is when the Husky was really Italian Husky. I mean, they still are, but the, you know, all that goes. It's, it's yeah. not really a, this is back towards the end when it was the only bike. It was <coughs> an actual Husky Barna. Husky Barna. Yeah. So pretty unique. Uh, everything's on the opposite side of the chain. It's yeah. A little short kickstarter that has a lot of compression. Doesn't feel too good when you kickstart it. But. <laughs> you were telling me a story. Uh, the first time you rode it, you went out, you took it over to Europe and did some races, supercrosses over there, and you told uh, those guys, "Hey, I'll do this deal, but I want, I want that exact setup." Yeah. And you said you got it, but then it, it blew up a few rounds in or something. Yeah, like when we went over to do a couple of races in uh, Italy there, uh, Ferracci, you know, this the bike was built over there um, by their guys, but they worked together on settings. But 
it was so good. The, the motor on it and everything, suspension was okay on it. But I like I told Ferracci, I go, I'm not gonna, I don't want to be showing up at Anaheim one unless I'm on that bike, this bike here, you know, the the one I had over there. And uh, he made it happen. And like I was telling you earlier, it, it um, made it through the first few rounds, and then I think it was Phoenix. The whole something destroyed got came apart in the motor. So yeah. that one was done. So I was like, oh shit. And it was never the now. same. <clears throat> never quite as good. Yeah. But still, overall, it was all, it was all right. Still yeah. a fast bike. Because it's, it's, we're riding today. It's probably you know. So. Yeah. Well, 2001, this year, they actually got their first Supercross win with Travis Preston right. at Houston, I think. And um, that would be their highlight. That's at, a heck you know. of a highlight right there. Yeah. That was good. Uh, so tell me what, from those couple of seasons, anything stand out, good or bad? Um, the only thing that kind of the bad part of it, I, mean, I did get hurt pretty good on this bike, um, which yeah, I could have got hurt on any bike. It was just motocross and supercross. So. Uh, but I, it, it was just not very reliable um, sometimes. You know, the motor seemed like for a while I was struggling getting through a 250 outdoor. I did ride this in the outdoors, I think, 02. And uh, I could barely make it through a race without pushing it off the track. So I was getting more <laughs> more um, PR by interviewing after the ride, pushing the bike off the track. Got some, just, got your, your training was, uh, oh, I'm going to get some training in after the moto. I'll yeah, push it back yeah, to the I'm track. Yeah, I'm here. I remember racing here, and I had to leave it in the back corner because the hub destroyed on the back, and I couldn't push it, and I just hiked back. Uh, but no, I mean, good times for sure. I mean, I'm not telling you anything bad about the team or anything. They busted their butts. So Rado Ferracci was a great guy. It was a lot of fun, and the man of his word. Yeah, no, he always seemed like a great guy, and yeah. you know the bikes looked cool. I just remember hearing stories from Travis and JT, how these things were kind of volatile. Yeah, yeah, I know that we had a big team at times. I mean, Gosser, Chris Gosser was on there. And, oh yeah, good. Uh, he would stay with me when we'd uh, go to Northern California around Hangtown, Hangtown time, and he was pretty much over it at one point, you know, and uh, <laughs> didn't want to race no more. So I said, oh, you want to want to race no more? I'll give, I'll make a phone call, I'll call Rado and take care of it. Okay, oh, please do. So called Ferracci and said, hey, Chris Gosser don't want to race this thing no more. He hates it. Tell him to sit home and watch cartoons and eat, eat cereal. I'll pay him. So that, that's all it was. <laughs> Is that so easy? So he stayed home, yeah. <laughs> he, he still hasn't thanked me the next day, though. That's funny. Well, it's pretty funny, though. It was pretty fun bike. Like I said, I, I, I wouldn't want to ride this on a national track because of the chassis and handling, but I really had fun on the engine. Just getting into it and, and coming out of turns, the thing wanted to just go. It was yeah, pretty fun. I, so. I did have a lot of fun today too right now. So. And you were talking a little bit about the grips. I was laughing because these are full <laughs> waffles that, you know, with the, the grip shaved down or the, the the waffle on top shaved off. And this is how half waffle grips became a thing. And, and I didn't know if around this time if they made half waffles. I think they did. But you said you liked the little ri uh, lip yeah. on the edge. Yeah, that's what it did. Is they um, they did make you now think about it half waffle, but they didn't have this lip at all. Yeah. Right? So my hand would slide off going right on the edge, I guess. So I did the same thing at Honda, stock Honda grips, shaved them all down to half waffle, and they had the big lip out here. And that's the my, that's the old school on, way to do it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right Pretty on. Funny though. Well, man, I, I sure appreciate you taking the time to come out and do this. Thank you. It's man. always good to see you. Um, you know, I know you're you're training the military guys, and it's kind of your main gig now. So how's that thing going? <laughs> This bringing me out here, I appreciate you, you know, having me and uh, probably make me get on the bike a little bit more now. It's been, it's yeah, man. Fun. You look good. Like even, uh, you know, our video guy goes, oh, it looks pretty fast to me. So. <laughs> yeah. Fish out of water a little bit at times. And so. I, I said, oh, he's a two-time national champion. He goes, oh, really? <laughs> That's how quickly you get forgotten, buddy. Oh, yeah. It's all good. It's all good. <laughs> uh, we, we really appreciate you. Um, man, thank you to Robbie for letting us do this uh, test on this bike. Pretty rare that you get to ride a race bike good or bad or indifferent um this is the actual one of the race bikes so i really appreciate that and uh hope you guys enjoyed it thanks for watching if you like this video like subscribe all that stuff and uh leave a comment and follow steve lampson on instagram because he's a bad dude all right <laughs> we'll see
If you like this video, please be sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of our future videos, comment what you thought, and share it with your friends.